play sports here. Uh, they would hold uh, community dances. This particular building also served as a place of repast for funerals and things of that nature. That's one man recounting his experience of a school in his small rural town that educated black children during segregation. The former school, which is part of the town's history, is deteriorating and in need of restoration. Our in-depth reporter Anthony Hill traveled to Okahumka to see how the town is trying to revive the school and the legacy of schools just like it we have in our state. Well, when I was growing up here, uh, until 1968, it was a segregated society. Okahumka is a small rural town in central Florida, just about an hour and a half north of Tampa. You get a little older in life when you, I'd say seven, eight years old, you be gradually began to notice the, the difference in our society that existed at that, at that time. Charles Fields is a former FBI agent. He has lived around the country for his job, but he still remembers how life was in his hometown and the school that gave local black children the opportunity to attain an education. So when you were younger, did you come here often? Yeah, yeah, I, I had, uh, I have older, older siblings who were students here. He's talking about the Okahomka Rosenwald School. Rosenwald schools were where black children could get an education. And now the community is trying to restore the old school that opened in 1929. It's trying to reuse and repurpose everything in the school that we can. Without these Rosenwald schools, there would not be as many uh, African Americans educated as there are. Back when this school was originally constructed, this building only had two classrooms. On this side, you had students from grades one through four receiving their education together. And on that side, classes were held for students from grades five through eight. There were more than 5,000 Rosenwald schools built during segregation. 120 of those schools were constructed right here in Florida. And of those, 23 are still standing. Tell me a little bit about Rosenwald schools here. Uh, Julius Rosenwald was the uh, president and CEO of Sears Roebuck and Company in, out of Chicago. Julius Rosenwald befriended Booker T. Washington, a man who was born enslaved and went on to become an educator, author, and advisor to several presidents. He saw a connection or a parallel, if you will, between how African-American kids were being treated here and how Jews were being treated in Germany. And with that, they formed a partnership to build schools that would educate a generation of black children in the Jim Crow South. Most Rosenwald schools have been demolished or in bad condition, like this school. The Okahumka Community Club's goal is to restore this school, and they received hundreds of thousands of dollars in grant money to do just that. And kind of looking at the other Rosenwald schools throughout the area might be of use, so just some ideas for you guys about, you know, the material. Being here in the community, I think, really does get me, get my emotion into it. They've brought in contractors and just about anyone who can help in an effort to keep this piece of Okahumka history alive, including students of architecture from the University of Florida. In this case, it's holding itself together fairly well. So as an architect, it's really important to be able to go into this building and saying, like, how do I want to portray this story in this building and how people could understand how it was way back. All right, so Professor Walters, what exactly needs to be restored here? So the school has um, weathered quite a bit over the years. Uh, the roof and the foundations in particular need to be upgraded and, re and restored. Velma, right? Velma, yes. Yes, yes. thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You have a safe yeah. travel. Of course. Safe travel. The school, which is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, closed in 1964. Once it's restored, plans are to make it into a museum that will tell the history of the town. Why is it important that we preserve and restore landmarks like this school? It's important because of the education. You know, and uniquely, this is an edu uh, ed a formerly an educational facility, and it can continue to educate in the future. Because if you, if you don't recognize and, and uh, teach the truthful history of America, this is not just Oklahoma history. This is not just black history. This is American history. Tell the truth about it. In Oklahoma, with photojournalist Matt McGlashan, I'm in-depth reporter Anthony Hill, ABC Action News.